Hi everyone, this is SMICM New Ones training session number two's online lecture, Overview of the Thymine Rules of Procedure. MU1 is a very formal debate where all participants must follow the rules of procedures. Whether you're a chair or a delegate, rules of procedures apply to everyone in the committee. Let's take an example of a universally known rule. In MU1, you must always talk in third person. For instance, if I'm delegating the Russian Federation, I would refer to myself as this delegate, the delegate of Russia, or just Russia, and I would debate in such manner. Russia believes that it is important to call a ceasefire. Another also widely acknowledged MU1 rule is to not engage in a direct conversation with another delegate. Throughout the debate, you're only allowed to privately communicate with other delegates through note passing. Also, if you wish to ask a follow-up question to a delegate after not hearing a satisfactory answer, you must formally request one to the chair instead of directly jumping Perfect. onto your next question. In the world of MU1, there are two different models, Thymoon and UNA USA. The two have slightly different rules of procedures, and in this video, we will be covering the Thymoon version, which is a model majority of the conferences in Shanghai uses, including Smukmoon. Even within the Thymoon model, procedures vary between committees, but they are generally similar. The basic flow of debate is, first, roll call, second, opening speeches, then caucusing, then presenting draft resolutions, then debate and amendments, and lastly, voting. Now, let's cover each one with details. Firstly, the roll call. When it's about the time to start a session, the chairs will ask the committee to come to order and proceed to the roll call. The chairs will call out the delegations in an alphabetical order and delegates in the room will answer with either present or present and voting. Delegates who have answered with present, present are allowed to abstain when voting on amendments and resolutions, whereas those who answer with present, present and voting, voting cannot. Roll calls are taken every time a committee session adjourns and one-third of the members should be present in the committee in order to reach the quorum and start the debate after the roll call. Let's move on to the opening speeches. Opening speeches are given before caucusing in order for the delegates to talk about their country's stance and see which countries to work with during the caucusing. Just like during the roll call, delegates are called in an alphabetical order to deliver their opening speeches. Next up is caucusing, also known as lobbying. Now that you figured out who your ally countries are, and who's interested in the same topic, you will meet with these countries to work on the resolution together. During this time, electronic devices are allowed and you may freely move around the conference room to talk to anyone in the room. It is important for you to effectively use this time to merge and revise the resolution with the countries in your block. When you're done, the resolution will be submitted to the advisory panel where your MUN directors and officers will help you double check after your resolution has been approved and printed out, you'll be able to present your draft resolution to the committee. In most committees, there is only one main submitter for a resolution who will come up to the podium to read out the operative clauses and deliver a three-minute main submitter speech. However, in the Security Council, the resolution not only has a main submitter for the entire resolution, but also a different main submitter for each clause. Therefore, the resolution will be debated not as a whole, but in a clause-by-clause -clause order where all the main submitters will have a chance to present their own clauses. Here's a simulation of how presenting the draft resolution will flow out. The first resolution to be debated on is the issue of the Syrian refugee crisis. If there are any delegates who have not received a copy of the resolution, please raise your placards high. Seeing no one, the House will now proceed with the debate. Would the main submitter please approach the podium and read out the operative clauses? Clause 1. Strongly encourages nations to financially support our program. Clause 2. Strongly recommends nations to join our clause. Clause 3. Strongly urges to call for a ceasefire. Thank you, Delegate. Are there any points of clarification in the House? The Chair now sets 90 minutes open debate time on this resolution. Delegate, you have three minutes. You may proceed with your speech. 
When the main submitter finishes his speech, the chairs will ask if he is willing to receive any points of information, which are questions regarding his speech or the resolution. If so, the chairs will call out the delegates who have points of information so they can ask their questions to the main submitter. Thank you. Please vote for the resolution. Thank you, delegate. Is the delegate open to any points of information? Yes, any and all points of information. The delegate has opened himself to any and all points of information in the House. Is there any in the House? Delegate of Cambodia, you have been recognized. So this is basically how presenting a draft resolution works. Now that the resolution has been presented to the committee, it is time for you to move on to debate and amendments. During this time, you will be able to either speak for or speak against the resolution. It is your responsibility to judge if it is in your country's best interest to support or oppose the resolution. Here is another simulation of the debate. The floor is now once again open. Is there any delegate who is wishing to take the floor? Delegate of Cambodia, you have been recognized. The delegate of Cambodia believes the resolution is perfect. Thank you, delegate. Is the delegate open to any points of information? Any and all. The delegate has opened himself to any and all points of information. Is there any in the House? Seeing none, delegate, you may yield the floor back to the chair or to another delegate. Uh, to another delegate, please. To which delegate would you like to yield the floor to? To the delegate of France. Delegate of France, do you accept the yield? Yes. That is in order. Delegate of France, you now have the floor. Another way to use this time is to improve the resolution by submitting amendments. An amendment refers to a change you wish to make to a resolution. An amendment can be made to strike, add, or insert words or phrases to a clause. The debate on amendment is similar with the debate on resolution. When an amendment is submitted, the chair sets a debate time for the amendment, which is usually three minutes for the delegates to speak for the amendment and another three minutes for delegates to speak against the amendment. The floor is now once again open. Is there any delegate who is wishing to take the floor? Delegate of France, you have been recognized. This delegate has submitted an amendment. That is in order. The amendment reads, Strike Clause 2. The chair sets three minutes for, and three minutes against, close debate on this amendment. Delegate, you have one minute. You may proceed with your speech. This delegate believes that Clause 2 is bad. Thank you, delegate. Is the delegate open to any points of information? This delegate is open to one point of information. After these times have elapsed, the committee will then move on to voting on the proposed amendment. Usually, delegates are not allowed to abstain from voting on amendment. And amendments need a vote of majority to be passed and incorporated into the resolution. If the amendment did not receive the majority support, then it fails to be included into the resolution. When the voting procedure is over, the committee then resumes back to the debate on the resolution. Now finally, the last part of the debate is the voting procedure. During this time, you must decide how you would like to vote on the resolution. Remember, delegates who answer with present during the roll call are allowed to abstain, but delegates who answer with present and voting may not. Now, we will move into voting procedures. Admin staff, please secure the door and take your voting positions. All those wishing to vote for this resolution, please raise your placards high. All those wishing to vote against, all those wishing to abstain? With one for, zero against, and one abstention, this resolution passes. Clapping is in order. With this video, now you've fully covered the basic flow of debate and the basic rules of procedures. Hopefully, this video helped you learn more about how MUN works. Thank you. This was Smick Moon.